She's a sweetheart on screen. She's a sweetheart in person. You know her from many films, from Independence Day, Lifetime movies, incredible woman. I want you guys to stand up and give a round of applause to an iconic actress. My co-host with the mostest, Miss Vivica A. Fox. affected by breast cancer during the holiday season. And we all know how pricey the holiday season can get, right? These children nowadays, they, you know, they expense, right? Mm -hmm. Imagine the relief and joy that this brought to those families, lifting a significant weight off of their shoulders during a very, very heavy time. Your contributions tonight will help UBCF continue to give gifts of comfort and hope to those who need it the most. Secondly, we're going to pay a special tribute to Lauren Brown. Lauren was a cherished movie. Yes, yes. <laughs> Lauren was a cherished member of the UBCF family. Hey, cuteness. Okay. Known for her unwavering, com unwavering commitment to helping others, and she had a positive spirit. How you doing too, Q? It's okay. <laughs> Somebody takes his best. There we go. All right. Especially, Lauren expressed love the holidays. And what better time of year to honor her than when she shined the most? I want to say thank you to the family and friends of Lauren Brown. Oh, can I see what where the Brown family is? Where they are? For being here tonight as we honor the legacy that she left on UBCF and the entire community. Well, they was having their hand up over there.
want to take this time to introduce a wonderful woman who has dedicated over 20 years of service to UBCF. Throughout these years, she has been a part of UBFC's journey, champion support for breast cancer patients and their families. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to the Director of Programs and Marketing, Ms. Beth Eichhardt. one of our most cherished initiatives and Lauren's favorite, our Holiday Give campaign. United Breast Cancer Foundation is dedicated to making a profound impact on the lives of those affected by breast cancer. For 20 years, I have passionately committed myself to providing comprehensive support to the breast cancer community. It has been my privilege to be a part of the EBCF family, members over there around the room, to contribute to our growth and impact, and to witness the generous support of this amazing community. Not to mention, we have the most incredible team, committed and caring and determined people working every day to make miracles happen. UBCF is a one-of-a-kind organization. Our programs offer education, generous financial assistance, gift and kind access to essential resources, and we, of course, instill hope and empower individuals and families along their journey. I'm here now with Lorraine, and she was helped a great deal by the United Breast Cancer Foundation, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her story. Lorraine, tell everybody what happened. You were diagnosed with breast cancer, and you didn't know what to do. Yes, in 2016, I was uh, diagnosed with breast cancer, HER2 positive breast cancer. Um, I, like any breast cancer patient, you have fear that just comes over you and you everything is going through your head like what am I gonna do and you know what's going to become of the you know anything you know the treatments um, you know how am I gonna do this financially what about my family um, and then I heard about United Breast Cancer Foundation and they had so many different programs and my family and myself needed help with our rent at the time and I contacted them and they were like family. They couldn't have been any nicer. They, I took advantage of their um, individual grant program which helped my family tremendously um, and made my load a little lighter. You know, after yes. even going through the treatment, you, you know, you're so worried about everything else but, but that help really helped make and then they were also able to give your daughter a scholarship for uh, some cosmetology classes. So tell everybody about that. My daughter had been graduating that year. There was a lot going on and she needed help with starting her trade school that she was going to. And not only did they help me with the individual grant, but I was able to take advantage from my daughter for um, the scholarship program that they do offer and my daughter was able to have a little bit of money towards going to school which lightened the load quite a bit you know to help her out as well so they helped our whole family I'm know. here with Donna and this is another breast cancer survivor and thriver that was helped by the United Breast Cancer Foundation she's going to tell us a little bit about what she went through so Donna tell everybody what happened to you so I have cancer now for the fourth time I'm advanced stage four metastatic I became involved with the women at Babylon Breast Cancer Coalition and Terry Prague had connected me with Lauren Braun and I she kinda like took me under her wing and how they helped me and when they helped me was a few years after Hurricane Sandy when we had lifted our home everything on the first floor had gotten destroyed which was all of the mattresses and at the time when they had the pink bag giveaway they had the mattress giveaway so they actually helped me out with the mattresses and ever since then They've just been nonstop help. I get invited to all the pink bag events. I get invited to some of the events in the city. And just between the two organizations, I have to say, I would have been lost without them. 
So now tell everybody about the woman that we're honoring tonight. She's getting the Legacy Award. She's passed on, right? Yes. She but has. we're remembering her. So tell everybody, her, what's her name? Lauren Brom? La Lauren Brom. And yeah. when I met Lauren, as I said, she pretty much, she took me under her wing. And anytime they had any kind of event, and even times when they went, she just would call in and check on and see if there was anything that I needed and anything that they could do. They still do. I'm with Sarah, and she is a breast cancer survivor and thriver, and she also does volunteer work. So tell everybody your story briefly. Hi, I'm from Kentucky, and um, my story is I was diagnosed about six years ago, and once I got through that um, period of going through the surgeries and everything, I got involved with a local nonprofit who has a partnership with the United Breast Cancer Foundation. And that's how I got involved with UBCF. They have a wonderful program, a gift and kind program that I am able to volunteer for in Louisville, Kentucky. How them? Oh, in Louisville, sorry. In Louisville, Kentucky, we, we have, they are able to provide some services there for women just like me and some men. Um, and, and we are so thankful that not only are they here in New York, but they are nationally. And then those services can be um, across the nation for women just like me who have experienced breast cancer. Right now, I have with me here breast cancer survivor and thriver and cervical cancer survivor, Katrina Michio, the beautiful Katrina. It's so good to see you. You look Aww, gorgeous. Helen, thank you so much. You look gorgeous, too. Thank you. Thank you. So now, nice here. She has been such a warrior because she had her breast cancer return. So she's... No. Nope. You didn't? No. It wasn't the breast cancer, and it actually wasn't even related to the breast cancer. I had another cancer last year. It was cervical cancer. It was stage four. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it, it wasn't related. Okay, but you had if the breast cancer. If it was cancer. related, it would have been worse because that would have meant that it metastasized. Oh, okay. But it was, it was a completely separate cancer. So in 2015, when I divorced uh, my husband, from a very abusive marriage. Uh, May, in May of 15 was when we signed the papers. One week later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. It was like between one and two, stage one and two. And they told me that it was very aggressive and that they had to put me into chemo right away. Um, it wasn't, uh, you know, about operating on or anything. And I said, well, just take them off. And they're like, no, no, we, c we have this drug that just came out a year ago that it took the ch your chances of it coming back from 85% to 98% that it won't come back. Oh, good. I said, I'm in. <laughs> what do I have to do? Yeah. Well, you'd be going for chemo for six months. The, after your second treatment, go to your hairdresser, have him shave off your hair. Um, this was a week and a half after I found out about it. It was like boom, 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 boom. And so what I did, uh, you know, I tell a lot of women this that are have to, you know, that are going to lose their hair. My doctor told me what you do is after the second treatment of chemo, it's gonna start falling out. And I was alone, right, because I was divorced. So he said, you don't want it to fall down into the sink and, and the, down the drain yeah. while you it's watch. It's traumatic, it's more traumatic. Right, or falling, or it going on your pillow, and then you wake up and you have like patches. He says, you don't want to do that. You're by yourself, it's too traumatic. Yeah. After the second treatment, you go to your hairdresser, have him do it, yeah. and he and my hairdresser was very funny. He put me in a bunch of little ponytails all over my hair, and then he cut them and he gave them to me. Aww. And then what I did was, before I had bought a human hair wig, and that looked like my hair. We put it right on after he shaved my head, but. So there was not. First, I looked the shock of a baldy head. First, I looked at myself. I was like, "Wow, I have like a beauty mark over here." I didn't even know I had that. You know, it was like <laughs> you never got to see your head. I'm like, wow, I, that, you know, that's kind of weird. I'm I'm bald. And then we put the wig on, and he cut my hair. You know, cut it that it looked like nobody ever knew in a year and a half that I wore that wig. 
nobody knew that it was a wig. Right now I'm with Larry Romano and he from King of Queens and he just gave away to the auction to the highest bidder his wonderful raffle, leather raffle. jacket. I'm the doing raffle. A raffle. Well, so it's every, a raffle. Yeah, so everybody can get involved. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's better that way. We raffle it off this way. Everybody can take a ticket. Everybody has a turn and to win the leather jacket that I wore on the King of Queens. Yeah, now that was meant a lot to you, but you feel that this is a, an important cause, right? Well, absolutely. I've been looking for a charity to donate it to for quite some time, and this is the right charity, yeah. Yeah, and so how did you like working on King of Queens? I enjoyed it. It's afforded me a lot of opportunities. Look, I got a leather jacket I could, ra I could auction, <laughs> raffle off with the proceeds going to help a lot of people. But you're also a writer and a director. You have a movie called Saturday in the Park, right? Yes, I do, yes. And how is that going? It's going very well. It's going very well. I can't talk about it too much, but it's going very well. And uh, it's coming soon, so be, be looking for it. Larry Romano, Saturday in the Park. <laughs> I'm surprised that there are also so many men in this audience supporting women that have breast cancer. I mean, it's natural, right? You got to support each other. Yeah, but it just shows how many families are affected, especially on Long Island. It's yeah, it's a very terrible hard. thing. I think that, you know, the reality is, is that we're becoming, where uh, America is waking up to the fact that the, the food source in America is cancer, is giving us these cancer, giving us these diseases. And um, and that's a terrible thing. I just got back from Europe when you could taste the difference in the food. I'm having a hard time finding something that hits my taste buds the way the food in Europe did. And the reason is, is that food companies are allowed to put ingredients in our food that they're not allowed to put in the food in Europe. And it's time that Americans wake up and start to recognize who the real villains are, who the real enemies are. And that's the people that are, are, are allowing this this poison to be on our supermarket shelves it's also our environment our and air our, environment our water too. it's our air our water you have a glass of water in germany you could drink it out of the faucet i'm here right now with stephanie mastriani who's the president of the united breast cancer foundation and what a spectacular night this has been stephanie congratulations on a wonderful touching event well Helen I know that you're also a breast cancer survivor. What, 25 years, you said? Yeah. 20, 23. 23 years. So it means a lot to have you here. Because you can understand what the women are going through and the families. And I think you saw how many women got up when they said stand up in the room. Breast cancer. Currently having breast cancer and survivors. It was like half the room. Yeah. I mean, what you do for them means so much. They have an allegiance to you and they have a, a, a positivity and a sense that they could go on and a real deep connection to you and to this organization and you had the Lauren Brahm award given tonight and I know you were really tearful because she meant so much to you this woman was apparently an angel on earth because the things that people said about Lauren were, were Incredible, remarkable. remarkable. Yeah. Always happy, always giving, and she's passed now. But she touched so many women who had breast cancer lives, not just in New York but nationally. Yeah. And once they they came out of the woodwork when they heard she passed away because she was so young and she didn't have breast cancer, wow, and so and she was such a rem like a, she made everybody feel so loved and connected and cared for it. and like everybody was her best friend. It's incredible. So when it happened, they all came out and like rally. And we, and I I knew we had to do something. But when the support came out like that, it was 100% evident that we are going. We're, it's on. That's it. We're doing it. Period. So every year we hope to give away this award to somebody who embodies what she was on earth. And that's going to be very hard. That might to be do. hard. But you also have a new thing where you're offering vacations to families. Touch it. I think that's fabulous idea she wanted that before she wanted that she wanted that she wanted to do a wish fund to families with stage four illnesses cancer whatever they may be so we thought we're gonna do that too in her name and her honor yeah well I've heard nothing but wonderful comments about what you does can. for everybody from uh, giving scholarships to giving mattresses to 
to giving funding if they can't pay their rents. I mean, and the list goes on and on. And this is throughout the United States. It is not just New York. So congratulations to you. Uh, Thank you for coming out. Oh, I'm happy. I, this is the premiere of the... The UBCF premiere gala of the Holiday of Hope. Holiday of Hope, and isn't that the truth? Everybody here tonight is very hopeful and very lighthearted and very touched by everything that was said and done. Thank you, Helen. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to Helen's fan club. And Thank you, so Stephanie. Thank you for spending this time to get to know us. And thank God Helen's healthy, and that means early detection, detection in general, follow up with your doctor. You can, you can beat it, you can control it. So, yeah, control it, it you're right. You control it, but it's important. Thank you. Blessing. I'm here with a good old friend, Todd Wharton, and we had a wonderful night tonight. What do you think of tonight, Todd? For the first one? Really impressed. They had a sold out place. Vivica and me spoke in the back with Larry. We were impressed by how many people showed up, showed love. Right, uh, the Holiday of here. Hope Premier Gala. Yeah, you know what I love? I haven't seen you in about, got to be about eight years. Yeah, it's been a long time. But this proves that events like this bring back great people for a reason. You know, and it's not stage screen between, it's everything else around that yeah, yeah well you know when i interviewed you years ago when you had tlc right the, uh, with, ltc, and LTC. GTC. yeah global talent connect which is no longer he, but todd was phenomenal in getting people together people love to come to todd's event he was all about people what they had to say getting them together and things have not changed he's still that way and that's terrific because not everybody's that way no, and I appreciate that. This is my mother. My mother raised me. If you really want something, do it correctly, do it right. I just found some in the industry to bring people together. The company died, but I found my passion during COVID. It's being the talk shows, and now we're number one independent in New York, and it's a blessing. I know. You do phenomenal things. You're at the ball drop at New Year's Eve, right? Yeah, I got uh, Macy's Thanksgiving Parade coming up with NBC. So so, you, and it, you know what it is? I'm going to give some people some jewels. It doesn't matter what people are telling you. It really doesn't. A lot of people drop this, but I'm going to keep it real. The road to what you want is always bumpy. It's always bumpy. You just got to find a way to smooth it out and live the way you want it. And if you do right by yourself first and people see what you love to do, they're going to get attracted to you and come on the pink carpet to do an interview with you. And it's not about the numbers, it's about, hey, am I going to get a good interview? And you offer that all the time. So I met you once, but when I saw you again, you have your show. I'm like, of course I'll do your show again. You showed me love from day one, let me show you love from day two. And day three and day four and day five. And talk about love. There was so much love in the room tonight for the uh, United Breast Cancer Foundation. Uh, uh, people are going through so much. And the love that is brought about by this foundation is really a comfort to the yeah. people that were in this room tonight. Oh, yeah. They really felt a lot of love oh, yeah. from Stephanie and from the organizers because a lot of them themselves are touched with breast cancer or someone in their family is. I mean, at this point... Who, who isn't touched by it in some way, right? Yeah, I was telling people that you may not have breast cancer, but you either know somebody who has it or somebody's family that has it. It affects one in eight women around the world, especially with black women, breast cancer, and men as well. And organizations like this, the reason why you have galas, the best way to bring people together to celebrate life is through a celebration, through a party. Yeah. All right? Because money and talking about this, it's a very uncomfortable situation. But people are more inclined to do it when they can come together and laugh and cry and hug. And it's true. There was a lot of great. laughing, crying, and uh, hugging and uh, a, a whole range of emotions. But the real people that step up are the ones that step out off the computer and show up and donate your time. It doesn't just have to be money. Yeah. Donate your time, show up, get off the couch, get off your TikTok, show up, meet people, and show people get you're off here. Get your TikTok. Get off your TikTok, get off your ex, get off your Facebook, get off your Instagram, because sometimes you need to go out and meet the real people that you're trying to connect with and online. Be in person. 
Well, it was great to see you again. See you again in our travels, I imagine. We'll bump into one another. And I'm so glad that we were together a little bit. I'm glad we too. Guys, follow this lady. We're here on the pink carpet tonight. And how are you going to end it tonight on this interview? You got something you like to say to everybody? Uh, got a little something? Watch my show. <laughs> right here.